Hi, hello and welcome back to F1 Challenge VB. My name is Mephisto and our epic journey through the history of Formula 1 continues today with the 7th round of the 1953 season, the German Grand Prix. It was held on the 2nd of August, it had 35 entries, 34 took part in the race and there were 18 retirements. The race consisted of 18 laps completed in 3 hours, 2 minutes and 25 seconds. Ascari started from pole, Fangio was second, Farina third, Hawthorne qualified in 4th while Strentina started the race from 5th. Farina crossed the line in 1st position to take the win, Fangio followed in 2nd, 1 minute and 4 seconds down, Hawthorne finished in 3rd, 1 minute 43.6 seconds behind, Bonetto came home in 4th, 8 minutes 48.6 seconds adrift, and De Grafenried crossed the line in 5th, he was 1 lap behind. The fastest time was posted on lap 12 by Ascari, it was a 9 minute 56 second lap. We're back at the North Lifa and the lap begins with a fairly long run into turn 1, a slow left hander that leads into turn 2, a tight right hand hairpin, which leads onto the straight that goes parallel with the main straight. Later on we come into this medium speed right hander which opens up. Make sure not to go too wide because it's very easy to drive into the foot of the bridge as you exit the corner. Later still we come across another right hander that goes up a hill. Careful when you exit at the top though as it is very easy to lose the back here. Next we come into the famous carousel corner, a slow banked corner. You need to get the speed just right through here in order to properly navigate through the turn. This is followed by a series of slow, medium and fast corners. One of them being this second gear left hander which generally catches me off guard. Not this time though. This leads us into the second carousel or mini carousel as I like to call it. This is faster than the main one but can still catch you out if you are not careful. We then come onto the longest straight in Formula 1, then through the final section where we apparently get a warning for cutting the track on a straight bit of road. And that leads us onto the main straight and that is a lap around Nordschleife. So here we are in qualifying coming around to post our one and only lap be just because the laps around here are just so fast and that, uh, uh, sorry, long. And that is a 839.3. Not a good lap, but oh well, I really don't want to do another 8.5 minute lap. But anyway, here we are for the grid walk and we have Juan Manuel Fangio in pole, Ascari is second, Farina third, Mike Hawthorne is fourth, with Maurice Tintinia rounding up the top five. Followed by Harry Shell in his Simca Gordini. Then we have Felice Bonetto in 7th, 8th is Jose Freilan Gonzalez, Andy Higgs starts from 9th, not bad, but could have been a little bit better, I guess. Galvez 10th, De Grafenried is in 11th in his Maserati. In the other Maserati we have Onofre Marimon in 12th, 13th is Sterling Moss in his Cooper, Herman Lang 14th, 15th is Jean Berra, 16th is Louis Rosier, Roberto Mieres is 17th, Ken Wharton is down in 18th and finally we have the Prince of Siam, Prince Bira in 19th. So the German Grand Prix, this could well be the championship decider. Uh, it's going to be a tough race. Uh, Gonzalez could win the championship but he has to win here and so could Louis Rosier who also has to, should have to win here and that was one of the one of the fellow Ferrari drivers losing control on the straight as we come into turn one who and a bunch of other cars lose control and we move up into third but that was a very good start on my part but yeah this could be the championship decider if either neither Gonzalez nor Rosier win this race then the championship will go into Andy's uh, hands because well there are not going to be any more and enough points left in the season to win for anyone except uh, Andy so we'll have to see how the race goes before we decide on anything as we now chase after 29 here is a look at the start bit of wheel spin from Andy but a very very good start jumped four places and which is quite absolutely phenomenal and there is one of the Ferraris that lost control on the straight not sure how that could happen but oh well we also saw a few other cars 
uh, Maseratis behind doing the same as we came in come into turn two here and the Ferrari and Simca also lost control of their car and we're now looking at a replay of Juan Manuel Fangio in his uh, Maserati who has some engine problems not sure what it doesn't it looks like it's everything everything okay but it was an engine failure and here we have um, Ken Wharton coming around in his Cooper losing control of the car and there's all uh, we also have Jean Berra in the other Cooper who they kind of get got stuck there and not entirely sure what happened but they got stuck and retired from the race where they stood and that's uh, one of the Connaughts coming around here we have Alberto Ascari and his Ferrari coming around for some reason decides to steer to the left and up that hill and he's out of the race not sure why you want to do that but uh, oh well here we have Onofre Marimon in his Maserati who loses control of the car and has no idea how to get back onto the track I'm guessing and finally we have Maurice Trintignant in the number 10 Simca Gordini and we just kind of see at the top of the screen he crashes into the fence loses one of the wheel one of his wheels and he is out of the race as we come through this this left and right chicane like section which is actually the slowest part of the track I believe we're chasing after Harry Shell who is about five seconds up the road now lap three we come through this right hander ch still chasing after actually chasing after Rosier this Rosier at this point we're in third place and we have a replay of Oscar Galvez in his Maserati he loses control of the Maserati and I again I have I have no idea what exactly is happening I'm guessing that pathfinding kind of went south and he kind of got stuck there for a while then retired but anyway we're still chasing after Rosier he's about nine seconds up the road now Nino Farina is behind us and catching us slowly and eventually on lap 4 he did overtake us but then Mike Hawthorne retired and here we have a look at Mike Hawthorne he loses control of the car crashes into the fence and goes over it and that is it and here we have uh, Gonzalez, Jose Freilan Gonzalez who is having a suspension problem and he is out of the championship contention so only uh, Rosier left in contention we'll see what's hap how things go and this is Herman Lang his well we see what's happening his engine is smoking so he is out of the race so only one more person left in contention for the championship will it be enough we don't know he will have to win I'm not sure who is in the lead right now I know Rosier is still in the race and that is Nino Farina losing control of his Ferrari and flip it, flipping it upside down and he is out of the race Rosier is almost 40 seconds up the road I, as I told you he is still in the race here we have a look at that replay he goes wide, loses control of the car, flips it over and there I am coming around to move up into first place. And here we have the Grafenried who comes in to retire due to a failing gearbox so he is also out of the race. So lap 5 we are up in third. One more, this we have this lap and one more to go and Maybe this will be the first time we finish the German Grand Prix. It would be quite nice. Lap 6 and we're still chasing after uh, Rosier who is almost one minute in front of us. It looks like he'll be finishing in second. That's not going to be enough for him to win the championship. And here is Sterling Moss coming in to retire on the penultimate lap. On the final lap in fact. Not entirely sure why. And so does Prince Bira. He also comes in and it looks like his pit 
box is a bit further down the road but yeah they decided to retire from the race on the final lap no reason why but anyway uh, it really looks like Andy is going to win the championship and Harry Shell crosses the line to win the German Grand Prix very very well done from the American a good race from Rosier as well, but not as good. He finished second, so Andy Higgs is officially the champ, uh, 1953 world champion. This is his third title, so quite well done for him. Unfortunately, he didn't win the title quite as he would have wanted to. Two of the wins in this season were pretty much given to him. And here we have a look at the retirements. Quite a few. Everyone retired before they could complete 90% of race distance, even Biramos and Bonetto, who is one lap down. But yeah, well done to Andy Higgs, I guess. He should be happy for his third title. Maybe? Perhaps? Hmm, who knows? And here we come around a turn three here, and we turn off here. Normally, there would be a gate here, Back in the days, there was a gate here which would open and you'd go around back to... This is an escape road that would lead back to the pits. So we just stop here. Which is good because you don't have to do another eight and a half minute lap. So it was a good idea that they put that there. But anyway, here are the career statistics, and this was Andy's 31st Grand Prix start. His best start is first, has one pole position, has set seven fastest laps, his best finishes in first, has completed 21 races, all of them in the points, has won 12 of those, and two were at the Indianapolis 500. No wins in Monaco yet, has two championship titles under his belt, has a total of 136 points, has retired 10 times, has experienced 661 out of 848 laps, has 4 bronze trophies, 2 silver trophies, 12 gold trophies and as an extension 12 podiums. And here we have a look now at the championship standings. Andy Higgs is in the lead, in the lead of the championship and as I said he officially just won the 1973 title although he will have to wait for the official announcement until the end of the season and there are two more races left of course and unfortunately for both Gonzalez and Rosier there aren't enough points left in the championship for any of them to win at this point so congratulations to Andy I guess and everyone has scored points all the way down to 14th Herman Lang who is in 14th uh, very well done to Harry Shell, the American, who managed to win here at the German Grand Prix. But that is it for, from the German Grand Prix and from this video. I guess we could call it an okay race. Not the best. Not a lot of people finishing, but let's just call it an okay race. So yeah, that is it. Don't forget to vote for next season's team. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you all so much for watching. And as always, stay sharp.